Hello friends, welcome to Susan and John MacTube. So we are moving forward in our journey in complex analysis. Now comes the most interesting part and also very important for most of the exams. That is the application of Cauchy-Rayman equation. And from now on, you are going to enjoy the videos because we are going to do numericals. Till now it was like theory, but now we'll be able to do the problems. So in this video, we will learn how to deal with Cartesian formula of the Cauchy-Rayman equation. So let's start. So in the last video, we learned the proof of the necessary condition. Let me make it very clear. Necessary condition means one-sided condition. That means if a function is analytic, then 100% sure this will happen. We proved it. We proved it. But do you remember the actual definition was differentiable at each and every point? And that is literally impossible for us to do. Come on. In real valued function, all we need is the left derivative and the right derivative. That itself might take pages and pages. But in complex, it is impossible to try this. Maybe in some examples we can try. But practically, it's not possible for each and every problem. So this Cauchy-Rayman equation makes things like really simple. But wait a minute. It is not a sufficient condition. That means if I prove this, I can never guarantee the function is analytic. Maybe in your exam, your professor might ask a question like that. He might ask you to prove that a particular function is satisfying the CR equation, but still it is not analytic. Okay, so here comes the sufficient condition. So look at this. If you want to prove that a function is analytic by not using the definition, then you have to prove 1, 2, and 3. By the way, we are, we are not going to prove uh, the functions are continuous because in your high school you might have learned polynomials are continuous. You might have seen the graph of polynomials. Similarly, sine function, cosine function, the exponential function, the logarithmic function in its domain are all continuous. So, normally we don't prove this, but still we make an inspection. Okay, let's do one problem and understand. So, the question goes like this. Prove that the function f of z equal to z square is analytic. Also find its derivative. Okay, so please note down the question. Prove that this function is analytic. Also find its derivative. The method is so easy. z is the input and what will be the input? x plus iy. f of z is the output. And how do you represent it? From video lesson 1 itself, I was telling you, u plus iv. So I'm going to call the output as u plus iv and the input as x plus iy. And on simplification, x square plus 2ixy plus i square y square, that will be u plus iv equal to, what is i square minus 1. So I get x square minus y square plus i into 2xy. Equating the real part, I get and equating the imaginary part, I will get v is equal to 2xy. Now look at this. I know the partial derivatives exist. I'm going to calculate it. ux equal to, what do you mean by ux? It means the partial derivative with respect to x. That means I have to differentiate u by assuming that x is the only variable. 
So I get 2x. Similarly, uy will be minus 2y. Vx is, Vx means, yeah. So you have to focus on V. So 2y, Vy will be 2x. Now look at this. So all the partial derivatives exist. Now can you see all the partial derivatives are polynomials. And in your high school you learned polynomial functions are continuous. So I know the derivatives are continuous. Can you see ux and vy are the same. And uy is equal to minus vx. That's it. Now we know this function is analytic. Come on, an impossible thing. Do you think you can calculate all the possible derivatives with the limit? No. But with this method, we are able to understand this is continuously differentiable. It is differentiable everywhere. Now, if you want the derivative, I have a shortcut. I can write the derivative like just like the real valued function. Because all the formulae are similar. That's good news. That's good news. But if you want to find the derivative with respect to Z with a trick, that is ux plus ibx. Do you remember in the last video, in the derivation we learned that derivative is ux plus ibx. I'll show you. Look, ux is 2x plus i into 2 what is vx 2y? So 2 will come common. x plus iy. Do you remember what is x plus iy? Z. So see, I get 2 into Z. Okay, now let's go for the next problem. I hope you have a pen and paper with you. So I will strongly recommend work out the next problem along with me. So the question goes like this. It can be a short question in your exams. Depends on your university. So f of z equal to z to the power 3. Prove that the function is analytic. Also find the derivative by its definition. Come on. I know the derivative is 3 into z square. They want you to find the derivative using this form. So the method goes like this. Super quick. This is the output, u plus iv, and this is the input, x plus iy. So we get u plus iv equal to x plus iy, the whole q. So u plus iv equal to, what is a plus b, the whole q? a q plus 3a square multiplied by b plus 3ab squared plus i cube into y cube. Don't forget, i squared equal to minus 1, i to the power 3 is equal to minus i. And on simplification, right? Pause the video and write. You are supposed to get x cube. Can you see this will become minus? So it becomes the real part or it becomes a part of the real part, 3xy squared. And this i cube will become minus i. And on simplification, I get 3x square y minus y cube. Immediately, I'll get u is equal to x cube minus 3xy square. And v is equal to 3x square y minus y cube. Now, what should we do? differentiate partially with respect to x. What do you mean by differentiating partially with respect to x? You have to imagine x is the hero, x is the variable, and y is just a constant. So the derivative of x cube will be 3x square. But 3 is a constant, and y square is a constant, and the derivative of x will be 1. Similarly, u, y will be, now who is the hero? y. So 0 minus 3x, 3x is a constant, 
multiplied by 2y that gives me minus 6xy. So vx will be 6xy minus 0 and vy will be 3x square minus 3y square. You can verify it. Come on, the CR equation. What do you mean by CR? Cauchy Rayman equation. Ux equal to Vy and Uy is equal to minus Vx. But wait a minute. By verifying the Cauchy Rayman equation, you should not claim the function is analytic because it is not a sufficient condition. You have to do one more thing. Make sure all the partial derivatives are continuous. In your high school, you learn these functions are continuous. So obviously, this function, that is, what was the original function, f of z equal to z cube, is analytic. Now wait a minute, I'm going to teach you one trick. Before that, if you ever feel SJ Matthew videos have saved you in your exam, do support us. Okay, let's continue. So, the next thing we have to find is the derivative. But not directly. I know the derivative is 3 z square, but they ask, find the derivative using the definition. So, I'm going to write ux plus i v x. So, f dash of z equal to ux is 3 x square minus 3 y square plus i into vx is 6xy. Now look at this. In the last problem, things were very easy. We took 2 common and we got x plus i1. Here it is not that easy. So what we do is, there is a trick called the Milne-Thomson method. And with the help of Milne-Thomson method, within seconds we can find the derivative in terms of z. All you have to do is, you have to replace every x with z and y with 0. That is 3x square will become 3z square and this will vanish. This will become 6z into 0. See the derivative. Okay, now let's do another problem. This is a little bit more important. But before we start, you have learned something from your complex numbers. Sine i theta will be i shine theta. I hope you still remember hyperbolic functions. The drunken mathematician's trigonometric function. Because when we read the hyperbolic functions, we call them shine, kosh, dan, shake, koshek, and cock. It sounds very funny. If you don't want to sound funny, just call them sine hyperbolic theta. But don't write this as sine h theta, that is wrong. If you want, you can call it sine hyperbolic theta or shine theta or hyperbolic sine theta and you have to remember this result. Similarly, cos i theta is cos theta or cos hyperbolic theta. Okay, so the next question. Copy the question. Prove that the function f of z equal to sin z is analytic. Hence, find the derivative. Whenever they say hence, find the derivative, don't write the answer directly. They want you to use Mill-Thomson method and find the derivative. What is Mill-Thomson method? After finding the derivative, you replace x with the letter z and y with the letter, yeah, 0. So we start output and input. What is sine a plus b? Come on, what is sine a plus b? Sine a cos b plus cos a sine b. So u plus iv equal to what is cos i theta? Okay, great. So sin x cos y. Once more, if you don't want to sound funny, just call it cos hyperbolic y. Plus, what is the sin i y? 
i sine y so we end up like i cos x sine y i kept the i over here that's it we got u equal to sin x multiplied by cos y which is continuous but we don't care about the function let's look at the derivative what do you mean by ux the partial derivative with respect to x that means you're going to treat x as a hero and y as a constant how do you differentiate a constant multiplied by sin x you keep the constant and differentiate the function so we keep the constant and the derivative of the function will be cos x cos y similarly u y what do you mean by u y now you have to differentiate the same function by treating y as a variable so here we go the sin x is a constant and the derivative of cos is sin um trigonometric functions are continuous so the partial derivatives are continuous wait a minute we have to find vx and vy so v is equal to cos x sin y so vx is equal to um minus sin x sin y and vy is equal to what is the derivative of sin y cos y so cos x is a constant cos y let me check are they all continuous yes because trigonometric functions are continuous and also hyperbolic functions hyperbolic functions are exponential functions and hence they are continuous so ux is equal to vy and uy is equal to minus vx now let's go for the last okay now for the last part we are going to write the definition the derivative is given by ux plus i vx if you want the proof watch the proof of cr equations so f dash of z is equal to what is ux cos x cos y plus i multiplied by um minus sin x sin y wait a minute let me explain something the definition of sin x gives you e power x minus e power minus x divided by 2 so if i want to know the value of sin 0 all i have to do is i have to replace every x with 0 what is e power 0 1 so 1 minus 1 gives me 0 similarly cos x or cos hyperbolic x is given by e power x plus e power minus x divided by 2 so cos 0 will be 1 plus 1 by 2 that will be equal to 1 now we are going to apply the trick what's the name of the trick mill thompson method so i'm going to write the derivative in terms of z using mill thompson method that is cos z what is cos 0 i should replace x with z and y with 0 so cos 0 that is 1 plus i multiplied by minus sin z and sin 0 that is 0 so i will end up with as expected as expected because i told you the formula for derivatives in real valued function and complex valued function somehow came the same so the derivative is cos z you can contact us so i'll be back with more videos like this so till then my